Hello there. Today I'm going to show you how to process the H-alpha horsehead nebula. And this is just using one filter. Now I have a lot of other videos that show how to process color, but I don't have anything that shows you how to quickly just go through a monochrome image, which is really the easiest of all. So you'll, this won't be painful. You'll probably like this one. And what we're looking at right now on the left is a single five minute exposure of the horsehead nebula. And on the right is 13 images of the horsehead nebula all stacked together and processed. So I'm gonna show you how to go from one image to stacking and processing all of the images and ending up with something like this on the right. The first thing we wanna do is make sure all of the images we captured are good. So we wanna go into process, all processes, and B link. And I have a different video on how I actually captured the Horsehead Nebula if you want to check that out. So once we're in B-Link, by the way, I haven't, I'm not doing any shortcuts right now in case you're not familiar with the shortcuts. I'm just going to use the actual menu so you know where everything is. So let's go in, we're in B-Link. Let's open up the folder here. I'm going to go into my Horsehead Nebula folder. And we want to capture, we want to open up all of the lights. So here, starting here, highlight all these and hit open. Okay, now we're going to inspect these files just to make sure they're all good. But let's even out the brightness on all of them. So I'm going to highlight all of them. And we're going to click this top icon here so that they all have the same brightness. Okay, now let's just highlight the first one. I'm going to use the down arrow so we can just inspect uh, all of them. And what I'm looking for are making sure there's no airplanes or no streaks going across, no satellites. And I'm making sure that the, the stars aren't stretched in any way. So I'm going to start just scroll through. Okay, they all look good. If they didn't look good, say if number nine didn't look good, you could just highlight number nine and then you could ex exit out or just choose this button here to remove that image. Or it's one of these, is this it? No, that's all of them. So yes, yeah, the one on the left, since I'm not doing it, I don't want to actually use it. And once we determine that they're all good, let's put them into a good folder. Let's highlight them all again. And we're going to click this arrow. Let's go into here. You can skip this actually if they're all good. But if you want to move the good ones to a good folder, I just made it created a folder called good. Select folder. And now they're all in my good folder. So that's how you inspect all of your images. In this case, I didn't have any bad images. So let's move on to the next part. Okay, I've closed all of the windows. And now we want to actually stack all of the 13 images together. So I'm going to go into Script, Batch Preprocessing, and Batch Preprocessing again. And here is where we're going to incorporate our calibration frames with our raw images. So I'm going to say Add Custom, Add Files, and I'm going to go into my library of BIOS files. I'm going to click on BIOS, and I'm going to highlight all my BIOS files. Click Open, and these are all my BIOS files. I'm going to select BIOS, and I'm just going to call them BIOS files, and hit OK. And now you can see all of my BIOS files. These are everything I have in my library for BIOS. Now we're going to do the same with Dark. So I'm going to go into Add Custom, Add Files, library. And these are five minute raw images. So I'm going to choose from my library of five minute darks. Okay. I'm going to choose darks. Dark. I'm going to call that dark. Hit OK. Those are my darks. Now I'm going to bring in all of my flat frames. Add files. Let's go back to my horse head nebula. Okay, 
There's my flats. I captured 20 flats for this session. Open. And I have another video, of course, on how to create calibration frames. I'm going to call those flats. And here's where you have to give it a, a name that will match the light frames that you're bringing in. So I'm going to call this HA. Those are my flats. Now let's bring in my lights. Now my lights I moved to the good folder. These are all the good lights, which are, they were all good, 13 images. I'm going to call that light frames. And then I have to call this HA to match up with my flat frames. I'm going to click OK. And now you want to actually pick a reference image. You're, you want to pick your best reference, your, your best light image that you've captured. And I forgot to try and see which is the best of the best, but they all look very similar to me. So I'm just going to pick, say, number four. And now you want to put your output directory where all the processing in your master files will go. So I'm just going to go back to my horse head nebula here. I'm going to create a new folder called process. Select folder, hit run. And you'll get this message every time. Just don't worry about it. Just hit continue. And you're off to the races. Okay, I'll be back when this is done. Okay, our batch pre-processing is done. So let's open up our stacked image and see what it looks like. I'm going to open. I'm going to go into our process folder that we created. Master. And we're going to open up the light master here. And when you open that, three files, three images will open up, a low and a high. I, I don't really pay any attention to these. I'm going to close them. And this is our stacked image along with the calibration frames. And uh, that's what it looks like right now. So what we want to do is go into all processes, hit screen transfer function. And this is going to help us look inside the file and see what it really looks like. And we want to click on this icon right here that says auto stretch. And there's our horse head nebula. Not bad, it looks better than a single raw image anyway. Okay, now from here, what I like to do is go into automatic background extraction and see if we can remove some extra gradients from this file. And so I'm gonna click on processes, background modelization, and automatic background extractor. And from here, I'm gonna go down to target image correction I'm going to say subtraction, and I'm going to click on this square. Now, this is really your choice if you want to run this automatic background extractor. Uh, this is one of these files, images. This is really all the garbage it pulled out. We don't need to keep that. And this is the new image. So let's stretch this one too. Hit auto stretch. Okay, so let's compare these side by side. Now, it looks like the horse head actually has some darker regions. It looks like it's a little more defined and it's a little darker up here, but it also looks more grainy. So there's a trade-off going on here. And I'm seeing more, I'm still seeing a little more definition in this image on the right. So I'm gonna just keep it and see if I can deal with the graininess later. Okay, so I'm going to close the original and keep the one I ran the automatic background extraction on. Okay, the next thing we want to do is run a histogram on this picture because right now the, the image is still linear. If you were to save this to a JPEG, it would actually look like that. And we, we need to make it nonlinear so we can actually see what it looks like. We want it to look like that. And we're going to use the histogram to help with that. I'm going to go into Process, Intensity Transformations, and I'm going to click on Histogram Transformation. And I don't do a lot with the histogram. I'm going to use the Screen Transfer function up here to help me out. So let's just open up the preview first. This is a preview of our original image. And what I'm going to do as I'm going to take this triangle from the screen transfer function, I'm going to drag it down to the histogram right there. And it's going to turn our preview right. 
And what we want to do now is click this square and apply that to the original image. Now our original image looks white. So now let's turn off the screen transfer function. Click that and now we've got our original image looking the way it should. We can close the histogram and now we can even close the screen transfer function and if you were to save this image this is what it would look like but we still have some work to do. Now, now we want to make this image look a little nicer. So let's try and uh, make it look a little more defined. Let's go into process. Let's go into intensity transformations, curves transformation. Now let's just play around with this now. Let's click on this preview circle here. All right, and let's see what it does. Let's, let's move this arrow. Let's bring this down a little bit. Make it the, maybe the background a little darker. And let's move this one up. Maybe it'll improve that the nebulosity a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Let's uh, apply this to our main image by hitting the square. Okay, well, we're, we're getting closer. And I, I could have tried to create a mask of the, the horse head nebula and the nebulosity, and that way I could actually adjust the background and not affect the nebula, but I'm gonna skip that for now. And I'm liking how this looks so far, but we still have a lot of graininess in this picture. And one, one real cure for graininess is if I had captured 40 images instead of just 13. The more images you actually capture, the easier it is to work with an image. So I'm, I'm, but I'm going to try and fix that graininess right now. I'm going to go into process, noise reduction, and I'm going to click on TGVD noise. And let's try and smooth that out. And on this, what I did is I saw someone else run this before, and I just memorized their settings. I'm going to change this number over here from negative 3 to negative 2, and then I'm going to put this I'm going to slide this over so that this just says 13, maybe about 13, 13 is good. And I'm going to drag this one over, this top one, until it says, let's see, about 7. I should learn more about this, but I just like to play around with that. And you can keep adjusting these. And I'm going to change the iterations from 100 to 300. And let's see if it actually helps this graininess issue we've got going on here. I'm going to hit execute and I'll be back when this is done. Okay the noise reduction is done and you can see uh, it did smooth out um, a lot of the picture the graininess is gone. There, there's some sacrifices that come along with it in the details but it looks pretty good to me. Let's just see a before and after of what this noise reduction did. This is before Let's, let's make this bigger. That's before, and this is after. Before, after. Hey, looks good enough for me. And this is probably where I would quit this, this demo. It, now you can save this off as a, as a JPEG and impress your friends who don't know anything about this field, and they'll be knocked out by it. So I hope this demo helped. And that's all I've got to share for now. See you later.